If you start investing January of 2007 in the S&P 500 and you sell out in January of 2012, you would have actually had a loss. We're near a high, if not at one, by the time you listen to this recording. And that's just in the S&P 500 specifically that I'm talking about here. Individual stocks may look a bit different. Welcome to episode 29 of the Visionary Investor Podcast. Today, I'm gonna to be talking a little bit more about strategic investing even if you've been investing in the S&P 500, the timing around your investments is somewhat important. You can actually lose money investing in the S&P 500 if you aren't strategic. And what do I mean by this? If you invested in the S&P 500 starting in August of 2000 and you really were on a ride because it was at 1,438, it didn't reach and stay at that level again until 12 and a half years later in February of 2013. During this time period, there were two recessions. There was the 2001 and the 2007 recession. So if you understood these patterns, you could have had an opportunity to lower your cost basis and get in at even lower prices in the S&P 500. But for someone who just came into the stock market and they were riding that wave 12 and a half years later, they're like, I just finally recuperated my investment. You may be very frustrated, and if you're someone who hadn't done more research, you may decide this is just not for you. The five years prior to this, from August of 1995 through August of 2000, there was a significant increase in the S&P 500. You may have heard of the dot-com bubble. A lot of stocks were overvalued, and the S&P 500 went from $514 to $1,438, which over a five year time period, that was a total return of 180%. Just to kind of bring it to reality right now, the past five years, the S&P 500 has done fairly well. It's up 95%. If we take 180% and we annualize that, so look at what the return was per year, 22.8% from 1995 to 2000. So. You're riding the high if you're investing in it before, and then all of a sudden we see a long period of time where essentially we were flatlined. But if you understood we had a massive rise up and then two recessions, and you were able to capitalize on the downturns in the recessions, let's say you were just investing in the S&P 500 for the simplicity, there are ways you could have made a lot of money. And the other way, if you just bought and then sold when it reached back about the level it was at, you would have been flat. This analysis is looking at everything on a monthly basis. Day to day, there may have been additional fluctuations, but I like to take that out of the equation to look at things from a more monthly perspective because it gives you a better handle and helps you avoid some of the drastic up and down ticks that may happen day to day which you may not even realize, especially if you're not looking at your portfolio very often. So I share this because whether you're a newer investor, whether you've been investing for 30 plus years, understanding what happened during this 12, 13 year time period is really important. We had two recessions during this time period and prior to the 2007 recession, the S&P 500 actually rebounded. It reached above that 1438 level. The problem was though, we hit the recession and it fell drastically. If you were holding from 2000, 2013 comes, you've made back your investment finally, and now you have some small unrealized gains and you had confidence in the market, you did an analysis and you projected the S&P 500 was gonna continue to rise and you were correct, obviously you could have made a lot of money. But what I really wanna focus on here is how to handle situations like this because we're near a high, if not at one, by the time you listen to this recording. And that's just in the S&P 500 specifically that I'm talking about here. Individual stocks may look a bit different. Understanding the patterns around recessions is incredibly important because this gives you a better understanding of where we are in the economic cycles and whether you may expect a large drop coming soon. When we look at the inverted yield curve, using the 10-year treasury, minus the three month T-bill. Dating back to the past eight recessions, every single time after the inversion, there has been a recession. This has not failed us once. That does not mean it's not going to fail us. This recession possibly coming up, but you pair that with other data 
and you'll get a better understanding of where we are in the economic cycles. Obviously, to try to sell at a high in the market and buy at a low can be very difficult, if not near impossible, because of all the fluctuations and what really is going into and factoring the price movements of something like the S&P 500. However, if you invest and you notice we're near a recession or in a recession, if you're able to predict that, which we do teach you how to do this in our one-on-one -on -one program, Protect Your Wealth, so you can apply below or send us a message if you're interested in applying. By knowing this and understanding the patterns of the stock market and the economy, you have the opportunity if the stock market is down 10% or 20% in a couple month time period as a result of a recession because you're aware we're in a recession in this case, and this is obviously hypothetical because at the time of this recording, we're not in a recession, you'll be able to make greater returns than if you just bought and held. This takes into account that you're able to predict that we're in a recession or near a recession. On average, as I've shared before, over the past eight recessions, the S&P 500 has dropped 24% from the start of a recession to the low point in a recession. Specifically in the 2001 recession, when it ended, the S&P 500 continued to decline, so it didn't actually hit its low point during that time period in the recession, which when we look back to the 1960s, over the past eight recessions, that's the only recession in which the low point during that time period was not hit during the recession. It was hit afterward. So obviously trying to capture and get that exact low point can be very challenging. There's a bunch of factors involved. I'm not here to teach you how to do that at all. I want you to understand the patterns of the stock market and of the economy so you can determine, all right, are we in a macroeconomic environment like a recession and could this be a good time to invest more or is this part of the regular cycle of the stock market and it's not a great time to add more money in because we're very close to a recession. Without knowing the patterns of recessions, there is a high chance that when the S&P 500 is down or has been down 10% and you're invested into the S&P 500 through an index fund or ETF, you sell your shares because you're worried that the stock market is just going to go down and continue to go down and you're going to lose all your money. Or you've gone from a million dollars to $800,000 in a couple month time period and you don't have confidence in investing anymore. You're scared, so you sell. Imagine you did that at the bottom of the 2020 recession or the 2007 recession, the 2001 recession. This could happen at any point. This could happen with the 2024 recession if that's when it hits. The more knowledge you have on recessions and when you couple that with fundamental analysis and being able to predict stock prices, and we're not even now talking about the S&P 500 anymore, but when you can do that, you can outperform the market over time. It's important to understand that patience in the market is critical. I created an analysis from 1962 through 2022 to understand a little bit more about market timing to share with all of you. So especially around recessions, it's very important to understand these cycles because for instance, let's say you're investing for five years. You start investing January of 2007 in the S&P 500 and you sell out in January of 2012. You would have actually had a loss of 2.4% annualized over this five-year time period. The S&P 500 went from 1,418 to 1,258 on a monthly basis. If you understood that this investing time period was through the 2007 recession, you could have had a better opportunity to invest at lower prices by understanding where we were in economic cycles, essentially lowering your cost basis without being aware that we were in a recession or possibly going through a recession and just fearing because the stock market was down, you would have lost money. Even if you have an advisor guiding you, without having the fundamental research and knowing how the stock market has worked and how it could possibly work, there are abilities for you to lose money investing. And I don't say this to scare you. I say this because it's important for you to be educated on what could happen. Hypothetically speaking, what if the S&P 500 rises to 5,000, 5,100 over the next few months? 
and then we hit a recession and it falls 50%, 55% to about 2,500. Imagine you're feeling really confident that the market is going to rebound and we're not gonna hit a recession, so you buy kind of near this high point. And then you are riding this downturn and it gets so drastic, you decide you gotta cut your losses. Realistically, if you understood these patterns, you'd recognize these are buying opportunities because of macroeconomic events, not because the individual stocks in the S&P 500 are all suffering. Of course, some may, and predicting hundreds of stocks and their price movements is incredibly difficult. That's one of the reasons why I believe more strongly in investing in individual stocks that you can do the research on and understand where they're gonna be in the next five years or 10 years, rather than collectively looking at the largest companies in the US economy. So essentially, if the S&P 500 dropped to 2,500, would you be prepared to buy? You wanna have a plan in place that helps take emotion out, because otherwise, if your portfolio is just the S&P 500, hypothetically again, and you fall from $2 million to $1 million over a six month or one year time period, did you have a plan in place to protect yourself and to actually capitalize on a discount in the stock market. I wanna teach you how to be a better investor by understanding these key patterns. You're combining economics and finance and investing. By doing this, it allows you to have a significant advantage in the stock market and learn how to buy stocks and companies at discounts. Thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast and continue listening everywhere you get your podcasts. Have a great day. Disclaimer, this recording and the information contained within is for educational purposes only. The Visionary Investor does not offer any personal financial advice or advocate the purchase or sale of any securities or investments for any specific individual. We are not financial professionals and make no claims to be. Everything shared by us here on social media or elsewhere, including all videos, materials, documents, and any other information are for educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. It's imperative that you conduct your own research before making any investments. We will not assume liability of any kind for any losses that may be sustained as a result of applying any methods taught by the visionary investor. Please click on the link in the description to read our full disclaimer on our website.